I started working on this video some time back and I set it aside and today is the anniversary of this girl's disappearance so I decided to revisit this. Christine Denise James left her home in Coleman, Florida on or about May 16, 1983 when she was 15 years old. She was last seen leaving with her boyfriend at the time, Pete, who was approximately 18 years old, light-skinned, black male from Brooksville, Florida. Now, where that information came from, who was Pete? Did this information come from someone in her family, a neighbor, a friend of hers? I'm not sure it doesn't say. And the reason that that's important is when you hear more details about this girl's life and her story and her family, I think that you're going to um, ask those same questions. Who, who actually said that? So today is 41 years since she went missing. Things start to get kind of iffy. Before she left, she told her best friend that she was pregnant with twins. Her family didn't know about her pregnancy. But see, there was another story that said she told people she was pregnant when she was 11 years old. There, there's a lot of inconsistencies in that part of the story. She was about five foot five to five foot seven, weighing around 120 pounds. She was an African American female, 15 years old. One distinguishing characteristic that she had was that she had a bald spot on the top of her head that she had had since she was born. Her family story, that her disappearance. Um, some people don't even really believe she ever really disappeared. Um, she could be out there right now living life and, you know, maybe she went on to become married and have children. Maybe she was pregnant and decided to go off somewhere and have her kids. Maybe the dynamic that had been going on in her family for so long drove her away. And others believe that something more sinister happened to this girl. Some people believe she became a victim of the system. And others believe she became a victim of her own family. She was born March 27th, 1968. This would make her 56 today. She went missing on July the... Now see, here's another inconsistency in this. Other, resource, other sources say she went missing May 16th. And other people say she went missing July the 1st. That's a, that's a pretty good leap of time that's about six weeks difference but here's here's a very big inconsistency and um, red flag in this is that some people reported her missing or she was considered to have gone missing possibly July the 1st, 1979. That would have made her 11 years old. That takes me back to the earlier story that I worked on and talked about, was that at the age of 11, this girl had some really horrible events take place in her life, and some people believe she was never missing at all, that she was put into the system and just kind of phased out of the system. This article is from the Charlie Project, and it says that she was 11 to 12 years old when she went missing. She had told her friend that she was pregnant and that she claimed to have been pregnant with twins. This has never been verified. But you jump back to the other story where she was considered to have been 15 years old, she told a friend that she was pregnant and that she was dating this man, this 18-year-old uh, named Pete. Now, it doesn't go into any detail about who Pete was. 
she had a gap between her two front teeth. That was another uh, characteristic. Now here's part of this story. Christine was last seen in Coleman, Florida, sometime in the last part of the summer of 1979. She was in the sixth grade at Wildwood Middle School. She was the oldest of six children. She told a friend she was pregnant with twins and planned to run away from home and never come back. Her friend says she tried to stop her from leaving and that she should sit down and talk to her mother, but she was never heard from again. Christine's home life was extremely troubled prior to her disappearance. According to her sister, their mother was addicted to drugs. Christine had been allegedly abused sexually by a teenage cousin and an uncle, now, the teenage cousin's name was Robert Jackson Jr., and it was alleged that he and an uncle had sexually molested this child since she was little. This is why some people believe that when she was 11 years old and she turned out pregnant, that this was what caused this, that there was never a boyfriend um, and that the boyfriend story was made up to make it look like she just ran off with some boy. Robert Jackson Jr. was stabbed to death when he was 17 years old in May of 1979. This story says that Christine went missing in July of 1979. Robert Jackson Jr. forced his way into Christine's aunt's home and attacked and beat Christine while she was there babysitting. Now, did he attack her and beat her because she was telling people that she was pregnant and he knew that he had been abusing her so he was considering that he was probably going to be the father? Christine, who was only 11 years old then, told police that she stabbed him. But according to their sister, it was actually their mother who actually stabbed him to death. And Christine was told to say that she did because she was only 11 and they didn't think that she would get any jail time, that it was self-defense, that he had broken into the home and beat her, so she defended herself. Christine's mother, Lizzie May, reportedly stabbed Robert and shoved him out the front door with the knife still lodged in him. He was able to make it across the street to a neighbor's porch where he died. The Fort Lauderdale police, the Fort Lauderdale paper reported it that the 11-year-old babysitter had murdered Robert. This, I think, is from the police, the sheriff, Jim Roops. This is his report. He wrote, an 11-year-old babysitter injured to death a 17-year-old acquaintance who forced his way into the home and whacked and kicked the young girl during an argument. The boy, Robert Jackson, died in a hospital emergency room. First, they said he died at the other place from a stab injury to his back that had gone all the way through his heart. The only crime committed was perpetrated by the deceased. Jackson battered this little girl from the age of five years old, uh, sexually abused her from the age of five. This child never had no life. She probably did run away. She probably didn't make it anywhere. Christine was indicted for killing him and sent to a Florida juvenile center. Uh, no one is confident of the dates that she was placed or released from the detention center. It was either 1979 or 1980 when she went to the facility. So do they not have record of her having been in there this whole time? No one ever reported Christine missing. Her mother and her father both passed away around 1990 and 1991. 
uh, reportedly from a drug overdose. Maggie, the sister, is the only one who's ever inquired about her sister's disappearance and has been looking for answers. Um, I don't know if she was really pregnant. If she was, that may have been what the fight was really about and that he come there to beat her up because she was out telling people she was pregnant by him. I don't know. As a result of the stabbing, Christine was placed in a juvenile detention facility for a couple of months. And some people say that she was placed in there for her own protection. Now, if she was pregnant at that time, and she was placed in this juvenile detention facility, they would have known that she was pregnant. They would have done a pregnancy test and found out that, yes, she was pregnant. So here's where these different incon these inconsistencies come in. Many agencies give the date of Christine's disappearance as June 15th, 1986, when she was 18. So if she was released from a juvenile detention facility after this stabbing when she was only 11, 11 to 12 years of age, what happened to her then? Whose care was she released to? Was she sent back to live with her mother? Was she sent to live with another family member? Did she go into the foster care system? Or some type of group home? It doesn't say. And this also could be one reason why it's so the, the times and dates are so mixed up is because maybe she did go into foster care. Maybe she did go into some type of home and the social workers and the people in charge of keeping track of her didn't. So maybe they kind of just kept it hush-hush and didn't say anything because, for one, somebody may have been getting a welfare check or some type of check for her care. So this story was just really mixed up. And until her sister decided to start asking questions, um, nobody else really ever asked any questions about her. Not that it's been reported. At the time of this writing, February of 2021, she had never been reported missing. It was only that her sister started asking what happened to her. She lost track of her at some point. Could the children all have been taken and placed in different? Because keep in mind, she was the oldest of six. So where were the other five children after this stabbing took place? Were they left in the care of their mother? Or did they all end up in different homes and lost track of each other? And maybe it was just possible that they all just lost track of her in the system. So her sister reported her missing in 2021. She contacted NamUs, contacted the police. Her mother's name was Lizzie Mae Williams and her father's name was Freddie James. They are both now deceased. The events circling around Christine's disappearance are anything but usual. Now, here's here's part one. Here's story number one. When she was in the sixth grade and she was 11 years old, she told her best friend that she was going to run away from home because she was pregnant with twins. Her best friend tried to stop her from leaving and told her to go talk to her mom and tell her that she was pregnant. Maybe Christine was afraid of her mother's reaction. Also, Christine may have wanted to leave because she was living a very difficult life. She had experienced severely troubling occurrences in her home, in her home life as a child. It is suspected that she planned to run away. However, that does not make her case any less noteworthy. Children who run away that young and live as transients are far more likely to come into foul play. 
Children who run away that young find themselves in far more dangerous situations. She was a severely endangered child. She was at high risk of foul play. Due to the circumstances surrounding her home life, she may have been at risk of being the victim of retaliation or told to keep silent. This is another question that a lot of people asked. When she was released from this detention center, was she just taken and dropped off back at her mom's home? Was there no social worker assigned to monitor? Was there no probation officer assigned to monitor what was going on in the home and to keep in contact with her? And was she ever really taken back to her home? That's the big question that I have. Was she in the foster care system? Do they have records of that? You would think that a young girl that young who was accused of stabbing a man to death and placed in a detention center for a couple of months would have had people asking the question, is it safe to send her back into that home? Christine's sister stated that their mother, Lizzie Mae Williams, was addicted to drugs and that she witnessed her stabbing her their cousin, Robert Jackson, Jr. Robert had broken into the home, had busted into the home, uninvited, and began to attack. It was said that he began to attack Christine. Uh, the other girl, the younger sister, says that he was actually attacking their mother, and their mother stabbed him in self-defense and killed him and then told Christine to say that it was her. He was being accused of repeatedly and ongoingly raping and molesting Christine. Their uncle passed away a few years ago in prison for molesting his own daughter when she was a child. So, like I said before, this was just, this was an ongoing thing within this family. None of the children were safe in this family. And these older, the Christine's mother, the, uh, the cousin, they may have all have suffered sexual abuse themselves. Robert ended up being pushed out the front door by Christine's mother with the knife still in his body. He ran to a residence across the street and died on their front porch. And they believe that that was also a family member. Now, here's an article from a local newspaper of this incident. An 11-year-old babysitter stabbed to death a 17-year-old acquaintance who forced his way into a mobile home and beat and kicked the young girl during an argument. The boy, 18 years, 17, 18 Robert Jackson Jr. died in a hospital emergency room from a stab wound to his heart. The date that Robert was killed is significant because it gives us an idea of when she was sent to the detention center. This would also help us to figure out when she may have gone missing. She was immediately taken to the detention center. Christine's sister said she did not remember what year Robert was murdered. This is why I searched and found the newspaper article, and we know that he was murdered and that he died in May of 1979. Was the girl really pregnant, and did they keep her in this detention center until she gave birth? Were these babies or baby taken, or was she ever pregnant to begin with? Christine's sister recounted the day she vanished. Now, keep in mind, nobody had ever reported her vanishing or disappearing or being missing until the sister was much older, many years later. But she remembers the last day that she saw her sister. 
and she remembers that when she came home from school that day, Christine got dressed and told her, I'll be back, I'm going out. Christine's sister usually tagged along with her, but this time she told her sister to stay home. This was the last time that she was ever heard from, and this was the same day that her friend said she told her she was leaving. None of her friends or family members had ever heard from Christine again, but nobody went to the police. How old was the sister at the time that this happened? And is her memory correct? Or was she told repeatedly until it became a false memory? So by the time she got older, this had just been what she had been told and had told herself over and over so many times that this is what she came to believe. This, this person writing this article says, I have been trying to get her detention center records to get a more precise time frame of when she left the detention center. This would give us a more clear date of when she may have gone missing. Now, according to the Wildwood Middle School and the school system there in Coleman, Florida, her, she was last reportedly in school in the sixth grade. Christine's sister desperately wants to find her. She wants closure. She wants to know what became of her sister and did her sister actually have a baby or two babies and what became of them. If they were adopted, they probably were in a private adoption and maybe no one knows. I doubt very much that an 11 or 12 year old child gave birth and kept her babies. Now her sister says that throughout the years, through other family members and people in the community, she's been given some tips about Christine. Someone informed her that Christine was in Detroit. Another person told her that they saw Christine at a gas station. And someone said that Christine had placed a photo on MySpace. In the very early, um, when MySpace was new and just getting off the ground, and that Christine had a MySpace account and had put a picture of herself on there. And someone sent her this picture. The sister also says that so far nothing has panned out. Her sister finds it alarming and suspicious that no one ever filed a missing person report on her when she was only 11 or 12 years of age. Christine's sister says she was about 9 to 10 when her sister vanished. And she said she used to repeatedly ask their mother, aren't you worried about Christine? Do you know where she is? And her mother would say, don't worry about her. She's just fine. Was Christine sent away to live with other family members somewhere, maybe in Detroit or someplace to have these children and just decided not to ever return? Or did she run away and end up on the streets or, her sister says that she's upset that no one seemed to ever care what happened to Christine. This makes her believe that the family kept a deep, dark secret. Some people believe that she never really did return from the detention center, that she was placed in some type of home for her own protection from the family. For one, the molesting. For two, the attacks by her family members and that he or she was supposedly the one that murdered a member of the family. So did they not fear that she would be retaliated against? If her child, if, she, if it was true that she was pregnant and she gave birth, is it possible that one day these people, maybe these two babies or one baby, whatever it might have been that she might have had, could put their DNA into one of these databases to find out who 
who they're related to, and it could link up to some of Christine's family members. Christine's sister wants her to know if she's out there that she never stopped thinking about her or caring about her. She wants her to know that if she's alive, that she hopes that one day she will reach out to the family. Um, Christine's father's name was Freddie James, and he passed away never knowing what became of Christine. According to their si uh, Christine's sister, her father would often ask about her. He was probably the only family member that ever did. He would ask the other people, have you seen Christine? Has she ever come back? Christine had another sister that passed away years ago, and she has three brothers. If all of these people would put their DNA into these websites, possibly these children, that, or maybe they will put their DNA in, maybe it would lead to whatever happened to her. This is considered an unreported missing person case. Now, this is according to this person who wrote this article, and this is from Underground Mysteries, and this was written in 2021. My goal is that it will be formally reported to the police and that her sister's DNA is in co will be entered into CODIS. Now, there's a, there's a speculation that if Christine did run away, if she ended up on the streets, it's possible that she could have gotten mixed up in prostitution or some other criminal activity she may have been arrested at some point maybe her DNA could be in the system and there is no information online about Christine's disappearance there's a short blurb about her and a picture of her when she was about 10 years old once this story is circulated to many Facebook groups Reddit pages, and other YouTube channels, name us, and so on. You may end up searching that there is new information on this case. No one is sure of the dates that Christine was placed in this detention center. You would think that there would be some record of that somewhere, you know? I mean, I know she was a juvenile, but you would think that there would be some record of her going into this detention center and what date she was released and who, who signed off on her release. And if there's been anything newer, I couldn't find it. So as of today, Christine Denise James was, I'm going to go with the article. I'm going to go with the information that the sister was able to provide to this writer that her sister was probably getting close to 12 years of age. Maybe she had already turned 12. I don't think the story about her being 15 and in the ninth grade had, I, I don't even know where that article came from. Uh, I'm sure that it was just misinformation throughout the years. And I believe that she did go missing when she was about 11 to 12 years of age. My problem is my thoughts are that it's possible maybe she did get released from this detention center and sent back to her mother's home and she just came in from school, told the younger sister, I'm going out, I'll be back. Maybe she met with some fate. Maybe she did have an older boyfriend. And maybe she told him she was pregnant. And maybe he didn't like that. And, you know, maybe he had something to do with this. It could also be that when she left the home and was walking down the street two days after being released from a detention center, that this crazed uncle or some other member of the family who was angry and upset with her that she supposedly had murdered this Robert Jackson Jr. Followed her, killed her, and disposed of her body. Is it possible that someone was afraid she was going to tell the truth about what really happened? 
and that the mother became fearful that she was going to end up in jail and did the mother do something to her is this the reason why when the sister would ask questions about christine her mother would say don't worry about her she's fine i believe there's so much more to this and it's possible that nobody will ever know the truth because the parents have died the the uncles and all the older people in the family have died and what's left are rumors and hearsay and speculation and if christine lived maybe she, some people say maybe she was placed in some type of protection and that's a good possibility Maybe she did. Maybe she was. Maybe her name was changed and she went on to live her life and she's out there in the world right now someplace happy and, and um, you know, she was given a chance because if she'd stayed in this family, she would never have had a chance at any kind of meaningful life probably. I mean, I, I'm not saying that none of the other siblings did, but with Christine having been blamed for this stabbing this family member to death, what kind of life would you have had living amongst that family? So it's possible that someone in the system did take her and place her someplace. Thanks for watching.